Today's green list is inspired by the birthday of a true American legend. Were he alive today, Yogi Berra would be 96 years old today. And Yogi Berra is a name that I think will live on forever. He's one of the true icons. He is, and I mean this in the best way, kind of the Forrest Gump of American life, the places he was, the things he did, the life that he led, sometimes I think obscured by the yogiisms. People tend to know Yogi because he said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. And uh, because he said, you know, it's deja vu all over again and all the other things that he said, the, the famous yogiisms, which are hilarious. But the truth is, he's one of the greatest players that ever lived. And he had one of the most fascinating lives uh, of any athlete that you could ever read about. We will get to that. But in his honor, we're going to do the top five catchers in baseball history. You ready? The top five, the most important position in baseball, the top five catchers in the history of the sport. Number five. Five is Roy Campanella. If Roy Campanella had played a full career, he may very well have been higher on this list. You probably know his career was tragically cut short after 10 seasons. He was in a car accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. But in his 10 major and minor league seasons from 1946 to 1955, he won the MVP of his league, five of them. <laughs> so half the years that he played, he was the most valuable player in his league. He threw out 57% of the base stealers in his career. You tried to run on Campanella, he threw you out 57% of the time. That is a record that stands to this day. He played his last game 65 years ago. And that is a record that stands to this day. The Dodgers won 64% of their games when he was their starting catcher. Again, Roy Campanella, the career cut tragically short. Had he played a full career, he'd probably be higher on this list. For example, he'd probably be ahead of... Number four. Pudge Rodriguez, who was the all-time leader in games caught. He's the all-time leader in catcher putouts. Among primary catchers, he has the record for most runs, hits, extra base hits, total bases, and doubles. He went eight years between going on the disabled list. There was an eight-year stretch where he didn't go on the DL once as a catcher. He won seven Silver Slugger Awards and ten Gold Gloves. He and Ken Griffey Jr. are the only players to do that. He was the second catcher ever inducted to the Hall of Fame on the first ballot. Johnny Bench was the first, which makes you realize that Yogi wasn't, which is so ludicrous. It's, I, I have a hard time even putting that one in. Hemba will put a bunch of notes on there for me, and I'll pick the ones I like the most. I, I, I'm mad at myself for even including that <laughs> <laughs> because it suggests that Campanella and Yogi Berra weren't, which says a whole lot more about the voting process than Absolutely. it says about them. But either way, Pudge Rodriguez deserved it. What a rifle for an arm that guy had, right? A rifle and a great hitter. He's number four on the all-time list of great catchers. Number three. I was going to put Bench second. Hembo talked me into third, and he's right. Johnny Bench, in my childhood, so my age, I came of age in baseball in the late 70s. My first memory of watching baseball is the 1976 World Series in which the Reds, just the, the big red machine, dominated the New York Yankees. Dominated. And in my perception... Johnny Bench was the best player in baseball. Now, I don't even know if he's considered historically to be the greatest player on that team. Obviously, Rose was on those teams. George Foster was a great hitter on those teams. Tony Perez is in the Hall of Fame, played first on those teams. And they had, I mean, all these, uh, David Concepcion and Cesar Geronimo, Joe, the great Joe Morgan. I'll remember those teams my whole life. My perception of them as a child is that Johnny Bench was their best player. He's only the second catcher to lead his league in home runs in a season. He did it twice. He led the league in RBIs three times. All other catchers in history have combined to do it three more. He led the league in RBIs three times. All the other catchers in history led the league in RBIs three times. The Reds had only one losing season in 13 years with Bench as their catcher. He played in 10 postseason series. He hit home runs in nine of them. In the 76 postseason, which I was just talking about, 
Bench went 12 for 27. The Reds won all seven games they played, and Bench was the World Series MVP. See, that's what I mean. Like, he was the best player on those teams. To, 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 I mean, I was nine years old. So, I mean, take for what you will my opinion. But my perspective was no one could get Johnny Bench out. He threw everybody out. They were much too good for the Yankees, and everybody else they played, they swept the Yankees in the 1976 World Series, and they were all stealing bases on my favorite player, Thurman Munson, so I cried. <laughs> I was a nine-year-old, and I cried because they were stealing bases on Thurman. So I was going to put Johnny Bench second. Number two. But Hembo talked me into putting Barra ahead of him. And you're right. Barra won three MVPs, and that doesn't include his best season. 1950, he didn't win the MVP, but he became the first catcher to hit 25 home runs while scoring and driving in 100 runs. In that season, he struck out 12 times <laughs> and threw out more than half of everybody who tried to base, steal a base against him. He still has the record for most career shutouts caught. The Yankees had the lowest ERA in baseball during his time as a regular catcher. He's one of three players to receive MVP votes in 15 consecutive seasons. The others are Hank Aaron and Barry Bonds. And, of course, most famously, he won 10 World Series and 14 pennants. No other major sport athlete appeared in 14 championship games or series except him. Let me say that again. He was in four, he played in 14 World Series. No other athlete in baseball, basketball, football, or hockey played in as many. The great Yogi Berra is number two. Number one. But Josh Gibson is number one. And if you don't know the history of Josh Gibson, you need to read about this. Josh Gibson is unofficially credited with having hit 962 home runs. That's exactly 200 more than Barry Bonds. He averaged 179 RBIs for every 162 games he played. In 1943, he hit 466. He led the Homestead Grays to four consecutive appearances in the Negro World Series, picked up titles in 43 and 44, nine consecutive Negro National League pennants from 1937 to 1945. He has the second-best batting line of all time behind Babe Ruth. He was frequently and has been, and I think is still considered frequently, to be referred to as the Black Babe Ruth. But the truth of the matter is, if you really look at the history of the sport, you should be calling Babe Ruth a white Josh Gibson. That's neither here nor there.